Hi, I'm Kelly Parks of Palm Waters Cloud Accounting. I use Financial Sense to run my own bookkeeping practice, and today I want to talk to you about some of my fe favorite features for bookkeeping in Financial Sense. One of the first things I want to start off with, though, is not really related to bookkeeping, but it is how to use uh, all of the cloud-based programs in general. This is an efficiency tip, not a bookkeeping in Financial Sense tip, and that is don't look for anything. Search for everything in your cloud technology as much as you can. It is a huge time saver. So if you search for things, you can narrow down fairly quickly what it is that you're looking for. This goes for clients, this goes for templates, everything. So number one, don't look for anything. Don't waste your time scrolling. If there's a search bar, use it. The other thing that I would like to mention is how I use um, my bookmarks. So I bookmark my basic things within a, a, an identity in Chrome that I create just for accounting. And then I bookmark the site so I can log in easily. And then you can either, you can even link to your most used clients or whatever it is that you want to get to right away. Templates maybe in the beginning when you're setting them up whatever the case may be, set up a folder for Financial Sense and then run through it and use it to get to things quickly. Okay, so what do I want to talk about? I want to talk about dashboard. And in the dashboard, I absolutely love that you can set up views. So you can set up various views to get to them very quickly. You do that by creating filters and using different types of filters and then you can save a view and then when you are in the views, you can actually, when you go to manage views, you can make one of them your default. So this is the one that opens up for me every single time I open up in Financial Sense. So you can make a de default view for how you want to start the day. Um, actually, let's talk about starting your day. It's really important if you're going to use uh, a workflow application and one of the goals is to take your work out of email, is that you do not have it emailing you, all of your notifications. So in the beginning, you may actually want to, oh, let's not go to billing, you silly girl. Let's go to notifications. So what you want to do is, in the beginning, you may want to build up trust. You may want to see how the system is working. Um, and so you may want some things to come into email for you. But for the most part, start your working day by opening up Financial Sense and then working through your notification center rather than have everything email you. It's a little self-defeating to have a program that reduces your emails to then email you. You can always come back in. Let's say you're waiting on something specific from a client and you're not going to have Financial Sense open and you want to be notified by email. You can come back in here. Um, especially if it's right here, if it's a client completing a task. So um, you can come back in and set it for just that short time frame. Okay. Um, so number one feature that I love, custom dashboard. Now I want to talk about the client. I call them client cards. This is where you can see everything that's going on in the client. This is a test client, so I don't have any um, stuff showing for it right now in this area but there are some things that you can add in here just to make sure that you've got them. Uh, notes in general. So the difference between a note and custom fields, because I do want to talk about custom fields. That is one of my favorites. The difference between notes and custom fields. Actually, let's go into a different client for a second. Let's go into Calm Waters information. Nope, that one doesn't have a silly me. Let's go into Calm Waters test account just so you can see what a populated one looks like. This is where the work would be. This is how they're feeling and where notes would be. What activity is going on. In the notes section, this is where I use, um, where I put information that is specific to that client. So custom fields, which are over here, custom fields are the things you need to know about every client. You need to know entity type. What was their formation date? In Canada, we have a VAT tax. What's the schedule for paying out the sales tax? What's their business number? What are they using for an accounting program? That type of thing. The information that is 
consistent across all your client files. Put those in the custom fields. The information that is specific to a client goes in the notes. So this would be perhaps, um, well, like I said, just general notes on what the client is like. Maybe they have, um, I don't know, I can't come up with anything off the top of my head. But then one of the other things um, you can do is you can build relationships in here. So you can have uh, related partners, you can have lawyers. Uh, I'm a bookkeeper, so you could have accountants in here. And you can also manage client groups in there. And the group could be related companies or it could be the type of work that you're doing. And then one of the things that I really wanna talk about is the client vault. I love the client vault. And the client vault can be used for a whole variety of things. One of my clients, I actually pull their vendor bills from them. So I need the login information for anything that can't be fetched by the program I use for that, which is Dext. Anything that can't be fetched by Dext, I actually log in to their supplier portals and I pull the invoices out for them. It's a value added service. It takes them off their plate, but I actually need the login information. So I have that information and in there, I also, this is, it's fine to show this, but in there you can put a link so that you can la launch. So let's say it's Cisco food services would be one of them. I put in the website link that takes me directly to the login. And then I have the password information to get into, um, to get into there. I am also using it in my own world. This is my Comwaters information that I share with Marissa, my uh, lovely team member. And I had, this is a little, little known used one. So I created something where we share information about Calm Waters and our applications that we use for client work. And in there are our backup codes. Even though we share an authenticator, um, sometimes maybe we're going to need backup codes and rather than her having to get those from me, and I need a place to store them anyways. So I store them where she can get them and that is the client vault in a client I have created that is in fact, us. So let's go back to here for a second. Um, when you are in your projects, you need to, you see them as this, you need to see them as this. But um, I personally, I'm a list gal, I like lists, but Financial Sense is flexible enough that you can also have a calendar view. So there you can move things into a calendar view or you can move them into a list view. When you are actually in a project, so let's go to a project. We're in a project. Again, I have mine as a list, but you can set it up as a board as well so that you can move things around in the board view and make sure that you have the view set up for the way that your brain likes to work visually. Oh, one of the things I forgot to mention too, how to scope work, uh, creating projects from emails. Um, Email integration is coming. It's in, I guess, alpha testing. But until it is, once it is um, deployed, you're gonna be able to create projects from emails right within Financial Sense. But let's say that you don't want to integrate your email into Financial Sense. You can actually send an email, you forward it to projects at financialsense.com. And once it goes over there, it has the attachments that may have come across and it has the body copy. My best practice is to clean up the body copy before I forward it. Then I come on into Financial Sense. I open up that project. I assign a client to it. And then I start to create some tasks for it if I need to. But I've got everything I, knew I need to do the work for the client. And once I start doing that work, emails that come in with extra things are 99% of the time out of scope work. I turn on the timer. And then I make sure that I bill the client for that out of scope work. So move those emails into Financial Sense to create a task. And if it's out of scope, start a timer and then charge your client for it. We're not volunteers. And this is a way to make sure that you're getting paid the value for the work that you do. Uh, timers are another one of my favorite things. And so you can track time in a number of ways. You can start a timer, put in a manual entry after the fact. I don't do a whole lot of um, time-based entries. 
So I didn't actually list this on one of my top ones, but it is a super duper feature to be able to start your timers. The other thing that you want to do is when you are uh, creating your templates or when you're working in a project is actually set budgeted hours so that you can see how long a project's supposed to take. I actually love budgeting. I love budgeting in the projects. That way you know how long it's taking versus how long you actually thought the project was going to take. And that helps you know is um, that a project is taking too long or too little. It helps you manage uh, future work. But the other thing that it does, it helps you manage your team members or yourself. If something is taking a lot longer than it should, is it because you didn't scope the work properly? Is it because you haven't created a good workflow for it that's easily understood? You can start to see where the problems are with uh, time versus actual. So time tracking and budgeting your hours is super powerful in financial sense. Um, templates. Let's talk about templates. So as I mentioned, make sure that you search for everything. Let's let that go back and then make sure you have a naming convention. So anything that's bookkeeping for me uh, starts with bookkeeping. I know, I'm a genius. Uh, when you saw the ones that start with Kelly Parks, those are templates that I sell and share with people. And um, so, for example, uh, bookkeeping, and then we would move on to onboarding. So I have one so that if I'm starting a fresh start in a QBO file, then I have uh, onboarding as a label in here. You can uh, duplicate a template from in here and one of the things nice things is if you start off with a master copy so let's say that your master copy is um, is bookkeeping let's just take this master copy you can duplicate it let's take a look at it first so we've got all the steps and stages in it we've built out our client tasks in it including you can have live links and you can add descriptions and you can add um, files to it for the client. Let's go back to the list though. And in here, this would be a full cycle monthly bookkeeping. You can duplicate it and then you can start to modify it. So have a master copy, then maybe duplicate it by a vertical, let's say restaurants or let's say construction clients, what, lawyers, whatever the case may be. And then you can duplicate it and you can customize it by client. But the other thing that you can do is you can um, separate out the tasks based on the, the cycle. So monthly bookkeeping is monthly. But let's say that you do accounts payable or accounts receivable or both weekly or biweekly. Payroll is another great example of that. <clears throat> then you have a second uh, workflow just for that that you can set up on one of my other favorite things, and that is a schedule. Right in here, you can set a schedule. So it can repeat bi-weekly, monthly, but even better, it can repeat on your own custom schedule, and one of the things you can toggle is you can set it up for the first Monday of the month. Let's make it, let's make it weekly. So you can make it um, weekly and it can start on a Monday rather than a Sunday. You can also have recurring schedules for your clients' uh, tasks as well, which auto, auto nags them. I love auto nagging my client, just making sure that they get something to me. So custom recurring schedules, auto nag your clients. Who doesn't love auto nagging? Go back to list for a second. Um, and then I want to talk about dependencies. So let's go back into um, our templates. And let's go to bookkeeping. Let's go to monthly. And then let's hope this is one of the ones that I did it. This is my demo account. Oh, I'll just show you. So you can't reconcile anything. <laughs> Uh, until the client has uh, done all of their tasks. So let's, or actually you can't do it until you've cleared the bank feeds. So let's make sure that you don't do anything until you have cleared the bank feeds. That's what dependencies does. That's super fun. 
you can't do reporting until you have run either the manager review or I use auto review for that. So I don't have manager review in here because uh, I use auto review. So that's what it looks like to set the dependency. Then when you go to do it, you can't actually move on to here until these things have been completed. The beautiful thing about that is it is not a time suck. You don't start a reconciliation and then realize you can't get any further because you don't actually have everything back from the client that you need. So dependencies are super fun. Um, so uh, let's take a look at what these mean. I love that I can see what everything is. There's comments, due dates, who it's assigned to. Are there subtasks? Yes, there are subtasks. How many subtasks are there? And is there a description included in it? So let's go to a description in here. A description could be a best practice. A description can also be a link. So let's put a link. And it could be a link to a best practice of something that you don't do often. So let's say it is um, NSF checks, NSF payments. We don't get a lot of NSF payments, so it's hard to remember what all the steps or stages are. It's twofold. We don't get a whole lot of those, so we don't want to take up real estate by putting in all the best practices of NSF checks if it's only going to happen occasionally. But you do need a process for it because it only happens occasionally, so we forget how to do it. And then what do we do? We leave it sitting there until year end and that just makes for messy books. So this is how you can add in the links is right here. And then of course you have a few of the usual suspects of making um, this description area make sense. Um, so in here, uh, as I said, you want to have a description with links to um, what I call company wikis or best practices, or how to do it. But the other thing that you may want are files attached to the bookkeeping uh, workflow altogether. So that may be an SOP document that has everything in it. Again, not taking up much real estate, but they can go ahead and look for that file in here. But you may also want a file in publishing receipts. I'll show you a good example of that, is this one. Let's go to our list. And let's go to a guidebook. So this is uh, onboarding for your clients' employees. So the clients are hiring and you're doing the onboarding into the apps. And in there, one of the things that I do is deploy. Don't you love that word? I feel so official. Um, I need an employee guidebook to go to the employees. Very first thing that happens. And embedded in that employee guidebook is all of the things they need to do. There's an onboarding form in there. There is a federal tax um, form that they need to complete that they can then ba upload back for me. All of those things. This guide needs to be downloaded and sent off to the employee. A little bit of a description. But it is right here in the task, right at hand, to send off to the new employee to get them set up. So there's two ways to use the files. One is right within the task itself. And the other one is if you want it in the overall of that uh, project. Okay, so that is basically my overview of my favorite half dozen features to use Financial Sense for bookkeeping. Hopefully it was helpful for you to get starting in loving Financial Sense to get your work done as much as I love it. Thank you.